Coming up on today's wrestling news, Ronda Rousey condemns WWE's casting couch culture. A top WWE name undergoes surgery. We're going to tell you an ex-WWE commentator's surprising next move. And The uh, Undertaker reveals why Sting WWE Dream Match never happens. I'm Adam Wilborn. I'm Michael Hamflit. This is the news. So let's talk about what everyone was talking about on social media last night. Ronda Rousey uh, and her new autobiography, Our Fight, which comes out in a couple of weeks, mm -hmm. uh, where she's gone in hard on WWE and obviously Vince McMahon in particular. Um, it's worth a read um, what she says about the entire organization and Vince McMahon in particular. Yeah. She compares him to uh, Star Wars villain Emperor Palpatine said he was sort of treating it like Monopoly, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, she says, it was hard sometimes to know where the evil, unethical, slimeball character of Vince McMahon played out for the camera's ends and the actual, questionably ethical, many times sued and multiple times accused of sexual misconduct Vince McMahon begins. That blurred line between character and reality is a recurring theme within the WWE universe. Uh, she continues, pay-per-views are held in major cities like New York, Los Angeles, and Philadelphia, as well as now twice a year in Saudi Arabia, a nation that restricts the rights of women in a way that I'm certain Vince McMahon wishes he could. WWE bills itself as a sports entertainment organization, and just like in the mainstream entertainment injury, there was, by all accounts, a casting couch culture where men backstage in powerful position pressured female talent for sexual favors in return for airtime. There were so many public accusations and scandals, it's hard to keep track, and more that I'm sure the WWE managed to sweep under the ring. She's also said that women weren't just being demeaned backstage, but center stage with the likes of bra and panties matches mm -hmm. and all the disgusting stuff that used to happen back in the day and basically uh, says that the women's revolution only happened because WWE was in uh, Ronda Rousey's words arm barred into it with the hashtag give divas a chance etc um, yeah, a fairly decent takedown of the, the culture of WWE yeah this is one of those situations where Ronda isn't saying anything a lot of people now don't already know and for all those years already speculated but it becomes about who is actually saying it yes Ronda Rousey is, is in a position where she herself I think goes on to say she has no loyalty nor need for protection from WWE no. in any respect at this point in her life um, and obviously that is so often what stops people having the bravery and the courage to be able to speak um, the fact that WWE for so long has not just been the market leader but the only yeah. place within that market to get work Work, has stopped countless people presumably thinking like ah oh, I can't risk my livelihood now or my future earnings by saying something Ronda Rousey is not in that position there's an element of that like that old onion gag of like oh no the worst person you know just made a great point but again people from in powerful situations such as Ronda yeah. when they're not spreading messages that could be deemed I don't know hateful weird all that sort of things can also yeah. do this um, so yeah I kind of have a sort of begrudging uh, admiration for Ronda Rousey doing this when again she doesn't really need to you know there'd be presumably an open door for a star of her power and aura to come back in down the line yeah. you know never say never in pro wrestling and all that but to be as um, specifically damning as she was in these comments I think was notable um, you know just to sort of reiterate as we always say when we're covering the Vincent Man story there will be um, uh, various sort of links in the description to this video to various causes charities um, and organisations set up if you or anyone you know has experienced any of the situations Rousey outlines and of course as we continue to outline yes. as this Vincent Man WWE sex trafficking case continues yeah it's a, it's a horrible situation um Hopefully changes have been made within the organisation. It feels like that's the case. Um, she was uh, knowingly and uh, pointedly quite complimentary to Triple H yes. specifically. Almost as like a contrast. Exactly, I yeah. I don't know. Like, I just uh, really hope that the culture's changed within WWE now and it appears to be heading in the right direction at least. It does. Um, I was going to say we'll move on to lighter news, but then not really because we never like to report injuries. No. Uh, when we're, especially around WrestleMania season. We do have one of a top WWE name undergoing some surgery. I can't remember his name, I can't, I can't really do the bit because he's got injured. Yes. Uh, but we've got all this and so much more on the news of Nick Aldis. Yes. Um, who has suffered an injury. Now this was an interesting one. So he, uh, he suffered a bicep injury, so he's had to go undergo surgery. PW Insider had this story out, and look, we you know aggregate PW Insider on these news videos all the time. We're very grateful for yes. their reporting, which is typically diligent. Mike Johnson and the guys do good work. Um, but then he was uh, sort of then moved to get on X, uh, Twitter, whatever, and post about it to even acknowledge 
They got there first. How's that possible? He said, quote, yes, I just got out of surgery for ruptured bicep tendon. And yes, the sheets had it within minutes. <laughs> God bless them. Must be a slow news day. Anyway, it was a freak accident. I'm on the mend and I'll continue to fulfill my obligations. Those obligations, of course, right now are as the SmackDown general manager. Today, we can remember his name. Yes. But is there anything more to this? Um, Nick Aldis, uh, for those who don't know, uh, was, of course, a full-time wrestler before taking up this role within WWE for NWA and various other organizations. Organizations and um, long standing NWA World Heavyweight yeah. Champion, famously wrestled Cody Rhodes at All In, has pedigree. And I think we all assumed down the line there would be at least one match for all this. Was this training for that? Was this genuinely just as he describes uh, a freak accident? I guess time will tell. I loved how many dumbasses this exposed on social media though, when they were like, How's Nick Aldis got injured? Like, look at him. He's still in shape. He yeah. can just get injured lifting weights or just in everyday life. If he says a freak accident, maybe, he, I don't know, uh, Mickey James dropped something. He went to catch him. Went, oh, bloody hell, I've done my bicep. There's biceps under those seats, jackets, isn't yeah. there? There is a body it's under not, there. It's not, oh, bloody hell, the contracts, I don't stream my bloody bicep. <laughs> but hopefully, yeah, it yeah. is um, maybe a clue that we could see Nick Aldis in the ring sooner rather than later once mm. he recovers from this injury. And obviously, we wish him well in his recovery um, because. Yeah, he is someone, I know they've done this so many times, but he is very much someone I'd love to see say, I'm taking this goddamn tie off and kicking your ass. It's there. I think one of these yeah. guys is going to get it. I think it is there. Uh, the Adam Pearce uh, match at this point it isn't exactly a dream match, but I think they've got really wonderful chemistry together. I'm still waiting point. for Adam Pearce versus Roman Reigns. I wanted to finish the story. It was on the Royal Rumble graphic, and we never got it. Mm. Hey, often, to be honest, the card's subject to change, but we didn't want that change. Mm. We were the first to report it. It was a big change, if anything. But yeah, it is mad that, I don't know, maybe the surgeon subscribes to PW Insider or something. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah I just, uh, I just uh, um, uh, did some operations on Nick Aldis, if you want to report that. Yeah, bye, sir. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll be out for a bit. Freak accident, apparently. All right, see you later, mate. Bye. Click. But yeah, get well soon, Nick Aldis. Get Aldis's. well soon, Nick Aldis. If he can't work, obviously, and he's got some spare time over WrestleMania weekend. Nick, why don't you join Kazuchika Okada, CM Punk, and Dwayne The Rock Johnson? Say his money. But yeah, maybe. Yeah. Card subject to change. And that's the <laughs> alarm that reminds us of that. Apology if you can hear some beeping in the background. We're having some fire alarm tests here at What Culture. But yes, it's always sunny at What Culture. Goes down on day two of WrestleMania, Sunday lunchtime at the Brilliant Underground Arts in Philadelphia. VIP tickets sold out. General admission still available. And as I mentioned on the news yesterday, we got a lovely message uh, in the comments of the news the other day saying, well, we get to still meet you if you haven't got VIP tickets. Of course you will, except for Simon Miller, who hates the general public. <laughs> um, no, I'm joking, of course. VIP will just get priority, but we're going to be knocking about beforehand and afterwards for a, until the venue basically kicks us all out. Plus, we'll be around it's all, WrestleMania. We're all, all, rest, all week of WrestleMania. Just make sure you've got that $5 in your pocket to slip into mine, uh, and I'll make sure you get all the photos you need. I want to shout out. I'm joking, but whatculture.com forward slash tickets. I want to shout out my son, Charlie, and his brother, Josh, but especially Charlie yes. today because it is World Down Syndrome Day. And uh, I love you, kid. I love uh, everybody that gets to celebrate World Down Syndrome Day, but uh, I'm going to be in Philadelphia for a week. So we're going to celebrate it today because there'll be no time for me to celebrate when I'm over there having the time of my life. Smart. Indeed, Cheryl Wilborn's uh, absolute sentiment. Happy World Down Syndrome Day as well yes. to all that celebrate. Wear your odd socks. And then if people ask why, tell them. Mm. Uh, moving on. Mamma mia! Uh, Mara and Alan could be headed back to pro wrestling. Uh, this comes from Fightful Select. They've learned that MLW have been in talks with Morrow about possibly appearing for the MLW brand. Not a done deal yet, but there is interest on the MLW side. Uh, Court Bauer and Morrow have worked together on a Strike Force project in the past. And of course, you remember Ronaldo. Hello, uh, being a member at least done loads of MMA mm. stuff over the years. He's brilliant at that. Uh, he was on SmackDown between 2016 and 2017. Then he moved to NXT, left in 2020, uh, and mainly just does combat sports stuff now. Although he did do Impact's Rebellion show yeah. back in 2021. A divisive figure, I think, on regular television. But for big shows, I love his voice being associated with it. The, the pomp and ceremony really works with, with Mara. Yeah, divisive I would completely agree with. And yet it's that strange kind, isn't it, where like, I think people that just can't put up with Moro's style basically have to watch on mute. Yeah. But the people that love him would fight oh. to death to keep him. It's yeah. like it's kind of like both extremes. I can't figure out how like MLW. I'm not sort of saying MLW isn't a going concern or anything, but like obviously uh, Moro and Allah presumably at one point or another might have been close with Triple H, and you wonder if there's ever been yeah. any sort of interest with the WWE return. You know, he's done stuff with New Japan, so there's obviously links with AEW and loads of wrestlers that would love Moro as well. 
Caught that was recently had that 20 million uh, that he won in that case against WWE. So I, I can't think of any reasons yeah. why Mora would sign on the dotted line. But like, if he is going to get that, go and get that bag because we know there's cash available. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I like him being at very least, and if this is all this is, on the fringes of pro wrestling. Mm. Because I agree with you. I think he can be quite hard going week to week to week. But it's like Jim Ross. Like big matches benefit from those big voices that you associate Love with big moments. takeovers. Yeah, yeah, it's perfect it's situation. Class. Like that. Yeah, so fingers crossed we get to see more of him on television. Obviously, has a gr he's had a great deal of personal issues, and this sounds like he could be getting back into it, which is fantastic news. Do you know what he would have been great? Lend you know what match would have been great with him lending his voice to? Uh, is it Michael Cole versus uh, Jerry Lawler at WrestleMania? Or like surprisingly close for reasons I'll expand upon. No, the Undertaker versus Sting. Ah, yeah, that uh, one too. Yeah, uh, which one would be which in that case? I'm not sure. Uh, the Undertaker and Sting was, of course, the match that was like fantasized about for years. It yeah. was a dream match back when they were on opposite sides of the Monday Night War in the late 90s and again in the 2000s and 2010s mm -hmm. when the Undertaker streak was still ongoing and Sting was available obviously and WrestleMania 31 could have been the year but <laughs> you gotta play the game uh, but you gotta team up with your best friends the NWO <laughs> it wasn't just apparently uh, Triple H that didn't want the match the Undertaker was speaking on his podcast uh, it's one of the best podcasts out there that's not ours I'll put you six feet under. Oh, yeah. Because that's the name of the podcast. Oh, and yeah. I'm the dead man. Uh, which would put me six feet. Sorry, yeah, yeah. Anyway, the Undertaker said, uh, <clears throat> it just didn't work out. He had a short run in WWE and Vince didn't want it. For whatever reason, I don't know what it was, he didn't feel it. Everybody else was clamoring for this match for quite a few years. A year or two into that character change, people were already sending me the artwork with a billboard on the poster. It just never worked out. But people always think about things in a certain sense. I think in their mind, they thought the Undertaker 0708 versus Sting. It was later on than that. I can say I was way on the backside of what I was gonna do when he got there. I think, thanks for that, Undertaker. Yeah, I think what I'll make sure to buy a crate of beer for the boys for a that. A crate of beer for the boys. I'm seeing, guess what? I'm seeing Savio over WrestleMania oh, weekend. God, I thought you were going to say one dead man show for a split oh, second. Christ, no. Uh, but Savio's probably going to lost Barico at work in the Mark Hitchcock Memorial show, I believe. Yes. So, like, I can't wait to see, see Savio on the board. Buy that boy a beer or a crate of Jack. Um, what's it talking about? Yeah, The Undertaker. Oh, yeah. Uh, 2015 WrestleMania 31, of course, was one year removed from the Undertaker losing the streak to Brock Lesnar. So I think that's what he's referring to there. That'd have been good, yeah. I'd have loved that. There was definitely that era uh, sort Did of. Did he work 31? Wyatt. Bray Wyatt yeah. in the middle of the daytime. It was no, kind of a strange vibe. He didn't contribute to the program and then he beat him anyway. Yeah. He beat him anyway. Um, but yeah, there was that like sort of 07, 08, 09 period where it was like, was Undertaker the best worker in the world, he's actually? Class one, So yeah, I think he's thinking about that period where obviously Sting came in much, much later. Sting was in T at the time. So yeah, Vince didn't want it. Uh, the it's... real thing, isn't there, of like, uh, obviously the, all the allegations are horrific, but just in terms of like booking, yeah. how different it would have looked if, I know it's, Triple H was a worker back then, but let's say he takes over in 2010. Mm -hmm. like, I was reading as well on uh, X yesterday that Becky apparently saw Bianca backstage after she squashed her at SummerSlam and Bianca was really upset and Becky said, don't worry, I'm going to make sure you get it back and we I'll put you all the way over when we eventually run this one back. Which implies that Vince's idea was, yeah, Becky comes in and squashes Bianca and then, I don't know, Bianca disappears or yeah. whatever. I remember us having a chat about this and I was like, they might get there. And we were there in person when they absolutely did. It was never a plan. Like, it was just like, do this. Why? Funny. Yeah, I was like, like don't worry, let it play out. And if I'd have let it play out without Becky being the brilliant person that she is, yeah. Bianca Belair would have... I don't know, formed a tag team or something. Aye. So yeah, uh, all those dream matches, all those artworks, all them billboards, take a sorum. But uh, Vince didn't want it. So, yeah. Been the alarm for bad Vince booking yet again. <laughs> right, that alarm be going off all day and night. Anyway, let's move on to your Twitter questions. At What Culture WWE, of course, on X, if you want to get in touch with this first question today, it comes from. I'm going to go Joey Owie. Okay. But it could be Joey Owie, so apologies, yeah. Joey. If Mania ever comes to the UK. Could you see Bailey coming out to Hey Baby by DJ Otzi? That would be scenes. Could he even get a live DJ Otzi performance? I don't know how busy he is. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag G DJ Otzi for me. I don't think that's the actual DJ Otzi because he's got one follower. That's on definitely not him. Uh, look, even if it wasn't a theme, that's all you'd hear. Yeah. For the duration of when a theme stops to when basically a match ends. A beloved figure in this country, the roots of which uh, were from the, the fabled 2015 NXT house show yeah. tour. Um, and 
I hope some of that extends to this year's WrestleMania. Yeah, I, and I hope that's also the catalyst for more wrestlers coming out to real niche, but like earworm songs from back in the day. I want Las Ketchup doing a live performance. I was thinking Las Ketchup when you said that as well. I want the Macarena, baby. I want Mr. Blobby. Leave us your favourite. He's, he's a worker. He, he certainly is. He can give. Is he Riot Cabaret? I think it was. He's in a Shout out to the guys at Riot Cabaret, by the way. Him, yeah. him and Miller share cage match uh, sort of matches. Let us know in the comments your favourite niche pop single and what wrestler would be the Ooh. best theme song for them to come out to. I want to see some of the best suggestions. Great shout that. A stable called the Wenger Boys that are all like Arsenal football hooligans. This is Arsene Wenger wearing big jackets and then they can like unzip all the way at the bottom to reveal like sort of the, oh Dinos no. Dinosaurus is under there. He's, he's turned heel. Dinosaurus, what am I about? He's turned heel, he's gone to Liverpool. Or something like that. Like that. Let us know in the comments. Yeah, I want to see more. I know what I know what's playing in the office today. <laughs> uh, question number two comes from Scooty. Great suggestion. Sure, that isn't Scooter, because they could be. Oh, a lot of them, isn't there? Great song, Matt. 2020. Every bird and every hour, get the power, take Good. a shower. Good morning! <laughs> <laughs> anyway, should the Usos have a Rikishi on a forklift match at Mania, the winner is whoever lowers a Rikishi stink face into his opponent? I think that question's been asked in good faith, let me tell you. Uh, I think he might, the person asking the question might have watched uh, the buff Bagwell Dark Side of the Ring and remembered when Judy Bagwell was putting a fork Yes. Um, Did that, is that how that match ended? Uh, no, not okay. like that, no. I don't need the stink face ever again. I think Rikishi as a presence at WrestleMania would be quite interesting. Yes. Actually, ringside, not running, what the hell happened to my boys, the whole deal, you can do something with that. I do like Rikishi. Ever the workers work and being like, eh, can we keep all this within the uh, Samoans, lads? Kind of going online and like, annoying Cody fans and being like, I don't remember some routine. <laughs> Yeah. Basically, the sort of like 2024 bloodline better. It's like, well, I can definitely see why it would benefit you really? to kind of keep the bloodline at the top of the industry. I would love to interview Rikishi. Here's an open invitation to him over WrestleMania weekend if you want to chat to what culture. Um, I don't see that happening in their match. It feels more of a blood feud than that. Rikishi being lowered at snail's pace so his ass can land on one of his children's faces. Presumably, I, Jimmy, I you can't do that to Jay. I don't see it going. <laughs> That's what Jimmy does to lower the forklift. Lower it. Uh, final question. It comes from Mark Solid, accompanied by, uh, I believe, Michael Hamlet's worst nightmare as he goes to get Oh, my bed. God. Three dogs on a bed. A third dog. No. All good boys, by the way. Uh, but Mark says, morning, homies. Uh, what are your what are the top food or drinks you're looking forward to having in Philly? I will say this as far as pizza goes. Get a Sicilian-style pizza from any mom and pie pizza shop. I mean, this video's gone long enough. I don't know, it's about to go longer, brothers. Uh, right, yes, yeah, so a Philly cheesesteak every day. Obviously, every day. Every available flavour of Mountain Dew from every available supermarket. Oh, I want to try a pitch black Slurpee if they're still available in 7-Eleven because obviously the pop was a limited edition and the Slurpee presumably will one day go away. I need to hit up a Taco Bell to see if they've done the uh, Baja Blast uh, pie yet. Oh, With the, you know, the ice cream, because that's getting rolled out in America, but it might not be in time for that one. Uh, what else, what else, what else, what else? Else. Do we uh, get a double down here in the UK? I don't know if it's still it's going, it's it's occasionally on and off in the US. Uh, the thing is, right, it sounds like you're kind of wasting your time to go to like a KFC, Birkin, and McDonald's, but like it is a novelty to go and be like, oh, what they got? Hang on, what's that, that? What's that meal called? The three cheeseburger meal. That's three cheeseburgers. Yeah, people used to get really annoyed when we go to America and be like, hi guys, me, Phil, and Nicholas are just going to the IHOP for breakfast. And they're like, why don't you go to this lovely cafe? Because we don't get to go to IHOP. We haven't got an IHOP. Plus, breakfast there is basically enough food for the entire day. And the deli from Wawa. Yes. Everybody tells Oh, them yes, Wawa, we have so to go there. The deli counter there is worth a look. Also, I, am give well, I have given up sweets uh, for Lent, but thankfully, that's going to be over by the time we go to America. Convenient, that, isn't it? <laughs> My favourite food in the world is a bag of Skittles Chewies, as many people may already know. What does America have? Hit me up on X, at Adam Wilborn, uh, to I'll let me know. Starting off with Jolly Ranchers. Yeah, I love just going into a CVS or whatever, mm -hmm. going to that sweet island, just going, thank you. I've got that iPhone. We had, we remember when we were in that? That was a 7-Eleven yeah. uh, in, uh, in Texas. I went, have you seen this? It's a... Uh, I think it was a Reese's peanut butter cup with crisps in it. Yeah, loved it. They just put things inside the chocolate. Oh. There's a picture that comes up on my phone, there's Apple like, happy memories, and it's like supposed to be like your children or your loved ones or your wife or your husband or whatever. Out of the way, uh, out of the way you. Always pops up a view is you holding American football, the way you put it in a sweet, oh. in a sweet aisle with a CVS. Oh, so you've, you've obviously got that. You've run into a sweet, have a look at me, take a picture. I love a butterfinger as well. Classic joke, that. I'm gonna have to pull that one out for Nicholas. Please do that again. That's got Laura at this point, hasn't it? 
<laughs> well, well, okay. But yeah, let us know. Uh, and uh, keep the stupid questions coming. I want to have some really stupid ones tomorrow. It's fine, isn't it? Yeah. At what culture WWE on X. Uh, let us know your thoughts on everything in the comments section below. And while you're at it, why not check out this video right here? We'll see you soon.